This is the new Ford F-150 pickup. The 12th generation of a truck that's been around for more than 60 years. When the US auto industry was on the ropes, the F-150 helped keep Ford on track during hard economic times. We were in a tough situation like everyone else. It's a truck that can haul, it can tow. And it can play. We build F-150s all the way from a humble work truck all the way up to a, almost like a luxury car. And it's built here, inside Ford's ultimate factory. Ford's Dearborn truck plant is massive. It's about 2.4 million square feet. Uh, it houses about 3,500 employees. A factory where everything is constantly in motion. If you look from start to finish, you've got about 4.2 miles of conveyor system. It zigzags north, south, east, west throughout the facility. It's a bit like an amusement ride. A very crowded amusement ride. Every day, they build a little over 1,200 trucks here. And each truck has about 3,000 different parts. That's more than three and a half million bits and pieces moving through the factory at the same time. It always amazes me. It's a marvel how all of that complexity comes together and, and uh, does it so quickly. Both management and workers know that building the F-150 is critical to keeping Ford in business. We went from down weeks a couple of years ago to now I'm, I'm at max capacity. That's really a good place to be. Really a good place to be. So you gotta be happy. You have to be happy to know that you are a global competitor yourself, because I'm a part of it. Ford's F-Series are the best-selling trucks in America. A major reason Ford was able to survive the economic downturn without taking government funds. We also have a lot of pride knowing that uh, anything being put down this line is done without tax dollars. We've made the sacrifices ourselves. We brought ourselves through this. There's a lot of pride in knowing that. I love seeing them. <laughs> Somebody got by. <laughs> and, and if you see them, you know they're buying them. So that, that's a good thing. And now that Ford is doing good, it makes us all feel good. This is Ford's most modern truck plant. It opened in 2004. Even with my family, I explained to them, I built a truck a minute, and no one can grasp that concept until you come and kind of see how it works. Every truck they build springs from these three main buildings. The body shop, paint shop, and the final assembly building. And here's the challenge. The Dearborn plant builds 10 of the 11 different versions of the F-150 ranging in price from about 16,000 euros to more than 35,000 euros. F-150 just covers all spectrums, more, more so than probably any other vehicle that we have out there right now. The Platinum is the fanciest F-150. But it's built right along with the lower end models. You have different style levels all the way up to our Platinum. So it's being able to have the flexibility to be able to handle all that complexity. Even if they're tricked out with top of the line perks, 10-way powered leather seats that are both heated and cooled. 
or a moonroof. The kind of features that have given the once humble pickup truck a piece of the luxury vehicle market. A Platinum F-150, as a luxury vehicle, it would hold its own pretty well these days. But every truck starts life the same way. With a piece of hardened steel. Because if you're going to build a pickup truck, you need a really strong frame. It all begins here on the frame line. A hoist moves each new frame to a carrier on the assembly line. It hits the line upside down on purpose. At the same time, this overhead conveyor system brings the rear axle assemblies to the line and lowers them to the main floor. Where another worker moves them one at a time to the frame line. You know, without the frame, there's nothing. A two-man team drops the rear axle assembly into place and bolts together the first of roughly 3,000 parts. Some with handheld electric wrenches. Others by automated machines. As the frame moves, they add more bits and pieces of the truck suspension. The frame is the backbone of the truck. You start with a frame, you start to assemble parts to the frame. Put the rear axles on, upper control arms, gas tanks, uh, mufflers. A fleet of forklifts buzz around the assembly line. They're connected to a wireless network, telling operators what parts are needed next and where. They lower the fuel tank into one side of the frame as the muffler swings into position on the other side. Smooth, synchronized, and fast. The whole job takes less than a minute. It takes less than a minute for a digital scanner to check the work. The first of several scanners placed throughout the factory. It's like a robot interfacing with your inspection processes that takes a digital image of the unit and lets you know if the parts are correct. Each frame has a date with its engine. But first, it needs some suspension attention. Rubber body mounts are bolted on. They may not look like much, but they're a critical part of every truck. We literally have guys who have spent their entire career designing body mounts to be stiff when they need to be stiff and be soft when they need to be soft. They're pucks of rubber with a small fluid chamber inside of there that allows you to isolate the cab from the frame to give you better body. The workers are isolated from noise and vibration by using special electric tools. Listen to the sound of a bolt being tightened. Instead of your traditional pneumatic tools, which are your air-powered tools, we use what we call DC tools, which are electric current tools that are tied into the line.
Computers monitor each tool and can tell if each bolt is properly tightened. Say, for instance, it took 300 revolutions to securing. If it only went 30 times, and the tool can actually detect that. So it's a smart tool. Getting every bolt tightened perfectly on the frame line is critical to building a smoother riding truck. It's science, but a little bit of magic to try to figure out how to make it all work to get a great riding truck. They have been riding much better over the last few years. They test the suspension and everything else on the F-150 at Ford's Michigan Proving Grounds, about 80 kilometers north of Dearborn. Over 1,500 hectares with every kind of road and surface imaginable. From a high-speed oval to gravel trails, mud, and water and a torture test they call Silver Creek Road. If you hate potholes, you'd hate Silver Creek. Well, you'll go down Silver Creek, which is a very rough road, and you're gonna see these tires hit some pretty large obstacles. They're gonna move up and down, and the suspension is gonna react that load. Ever wonder what happens when you hit a really bad pothole? The impact is like hitting another car. Every one of those wheel hits is gonna feel to the truck like a mid-sized sedan just hit the vehicle. It's that much force going into the vehicle. The frames may be ready for potholes, but there's a lot of work left before they hit the open road. Barcode scanners then confirm the right engines in the right frame. We have a lot of computer systems that tell us what to put in. Your color data information will tell you what to build on the vehicles, and that'll kind of live throughout the whole process, telling the operators, you know, this is what needs to, what components need to be on that vehicle. Again, each step on the assembly line is measured in seconds. Finally, the team can start building out the body. An automated machine bolts bumpers to the frame. A quick joy ride through the factory to pick up tires. and a spare they swing under the frame. Now the truck is what they call a rolling chassis. We've got a powertrain in here, engine, transmission, drive shaft, exhaust, rear axle, so you could actually drive this around if you could stick a steering wheel on it. But it's got a few key parts to go. <laughs> Some F-150s have fancy luxury car type interiors. Others are much more truck-like. Either way, all pickups share a common heritage. No matter how plain or fancy, they must be able to get real work done. If you look at the uh, basic function of a pickup truck is to tow things, pull things behind the truck, or to haul things in the bed. At the Michigan Proving Grounds, they test the truck's ability by loading a steel box into its bed. A box 
holding 1,360 kilograms of weights. In the bed, you can haul over 3,000 pounds, which again is uh, almost the size of a small sedan. The cab and the bed both start out as pieces of stamped metal here in the factory's body shop. Now the sparks really begin to fly. Using lasers and about 300 robots, body shop workers weld magic out of metal. They build more than a thousand truck bodies here at the same time. There's typically about 1,200 units in our system. But if I was to build one truck, start it with just the sheet metal in the body shop and build one truck, it take anywhere between 12 and 13 hours. The first step on the cab is to weld the front end with the floor pan, or bottom of the cab. The sides and back of the cab go on next. The robots are relentless, welding 20 hours a day, Monday through Friday, five days a week. There's roughly about 2,800 welds that goes into one F-150. The robots are programmed to know the difference between any combination of three different size cabs and two different truck bed lights. They bolt the door sub-assemblies and fenders to the cab. While on another line, robots weld together the pieces that make up the truck bed. They add the tailgate. And then, the back of each truck meets up with its cab. Ready to move together into the paint shop. But before they do, the front and back of each truck must pass a quality control checkpoint. Here, human eyes and hands double check what all the robots have been doing. I'm the control point operator. It's my job to make sure this is a quality cab before it leaves the body shop. Oh, it's lovely. It's lovely. When I, when I see one going down the street, I look at my kids, I go, I did that. They seem to think I built every last one of them. <laughs> did you build that one? Did you build that one? I go, yeah, I built them all. An elevator takes both pieces up. And over here, the paint shop. Where they're dipped into chemicals that clean the metal and get it ready for painting. Then, a combination of people and robots put on the primer.
the colored paint. And finally, a top layer of protective clear coat. The new bodies then head off to the final assembly plant. The final assembly building, like all buildings in the complex, bears Henry Ford's name. And how they build F-150s today reflects a lot of Henry Ford's original ideas. Henry Ford didn't invent the automobile but he did invent the moving assembly line and mass production. In 1904, he rolled new Model Ts off that line every 20 to 30 minutes. We start up a new truck about every 56 or 58 seconds. So roughly every minute, we bring a new F-150 to life. I think Henry would be amazed. There are more than 600 workstations just in the final assembly building alone. A new pickup stops at each one for less than a minute. He would probably be amazed that we have trucks that aren't just black, because his thing was you can order it any color you want as long as it's black. Back then, one color made Henry's assembly line more efficient. Today, the challenge is maximizing efficiency with more choices than just color. A lot more choices. Back in those days, the start of the mass production system, it was all about commonizations. We have a lot of different configurations available for the F-150. That would probably blow them away to think of how many configurations we have available. You know, there's thousands of variations, so 500,000 different variant combinations you can build an F-150 to. Henry Ford would also be amazed at what today's pickups can do. Part of this truck's success is that it can tow a lot of weight. 11,300 pounds as their max towing capacity, which is equivalent to almost three mid-size sedans. They test the truck at its max towing weight going uphill. Well, we got to uh, tow up 7% grade with a little over 11,000 pound trailer. And then coming back down. With all that weight going downhill, the engine automatically shifts into low gear to slow down the truck. The test driver doesn't use the brakes went down the grade, didn't touch the brakes once till I got to the stop sign at the bottom. No one's hitting the brakes back at the factory either. New truck bodies move into the final assembly building. But before they build it up, they take it apart. Doors come off. Making it easier to work inside the cab. The doors go onto their own conveyor belt system and get sent on a dizzy ride across the factory. It'd probably be like a roller coaster ride. If you looked in the overhead structures and how they zigzag throughout the plant, making it from one side to the other, it would be a neat ride. I am uh, in charge of the entire door line here. And we take the uh, body shop metal and turn it into a, a door that they can put on the, on the vehicle. Computer screens tell each worker what parts go into which doors. We have uh, broadcasts that are on uh, each carrier that list a blend number, and the blend number corresponds with uh, the number on the handle. They're all in order as, the, as doors come down on the carrier.
The next stations are for windows and weather stripping insulation. Then they install outside mirrors and wire them for their built-in turn signals. Finally, they carry the interior trim panels to the line. Now the inside of the door is beginning to look familiar. The finished doors pass through another digital scanner. It checks that each has the right parts and pieces. The vision system is an electronic uh, quality check. What it does is snaps a picture of every door that passes through here, and then it verifies the information that uh, is contained on our ticket through the barcode. Ever try to match up different socks when they come out of your dryer? That's easy compared to what they do at the factory. They match up finished doors to each truck. And here, the colors always match. I do have to put the door back on. It'll go through the entire conveyor system, and it'll match back up to that exact unit that I took the door off. I'm putting that exact same built-up door now back on a jacket. Number one, you give a egress, regress into the vehicle, open that up so you can do some of those neat things like happy seat. Happy seats help workers install seat belt anchors inside the back of the truck cab. And make it easier to install clips and bolts on the bottom of the truck. A happy seat which allows the operator to go inside of the unit and come out of the unit in a very comfortable position. This is the happy seat, yes. The happy glorious seat. happy seat. You have to smile when it's on the seat so it can be truly a happy seat. The happy seat is just one of several strategies modern auto factories use to make the job easier for their workers. When you talk about ergonomics, you know, that's the human part of the business. How do you do something repetitively like we do over and over again without harming the body? And that includes keeping workers from having to bend or stretch. You, know, you want your operators working between their shoulders and their knees, so we actually have scissor or a pallet system, which actually puts the vehicle into position, so it's more operator friendly to access it. Elements of the factory floor are also operator friendly. Part of the floor is covered in beech wood multi-layered, so it's got a little bit more absorption for them for the long hours that they work. And if you think about walking around all day on cement, if you, even if you're walking in a mall all day on the cement floors in a mall, it kind of gets to your legs after a while. Comfort counts when each work shift is 10 hours long. You're doing the same thing over and over, you know, for 10, 11 hours a day, so you're, you're pretty exhausted. I mean, it's a neat thing to, to build a truck and see the finished product. Now they need to finish up the body and mate it to the frame. There's no time to waste when the goal is a new truck rolling off the line every minute. F-150 parts are moving everywhere. 16 separate lines snake back and forth across the final assembly plant floor. It's like a symphony orchestra, and you've got to conduct it to a certain rhythm to make sure everything comes together. 
It takes teamwork. Sliding the headliner through the windshield frame and installing it takes four people. Other jobs just take one or two workers, like this instrument panel. It moves toward the line, stopping only to install the steering wheel. Then, another trip. To where the panel meets its truck. Next station, carpets for the interior. And a center console. The cabs move again. Across the factory, workers load radiators onto their own conveyor system. Then, install them. At the same time, large elevators bring a constant supply of truck beds to the line. The very first thing they do is put on the logos. They load bolts into a machine and begin the process of permanently attaching the tailgate. The beds snake around. and pause by a heat lamp to warm the metal. This makes it easier to apply stickers identifying each different model of the F-150. Then the bed heads for another line, where it joins its matching cab. A series of overhead conveyors and elevators move both cabs and beds. With cabs already hoisted high overhead, each bed slides into position. For the first time in the factory, the truck now looks like a pickup truck. They call this the marriage between body and chassis. Another name for it is the body drop. Not very romantic, and not open to any guests. A computerized elevator and machines do it all. If you look at like the uh, marriage cell, like the body drop, you'll notice they are in cages. Definitely for the number one reason is safety because you do have mechanical and a lot of things going on in that cell. You want to keep the human environment and the potential of someone getting harmed out of that way. The married truck returns to the line and two workers bolt its bed to the frame. A robot swings in front of each truck then, a turntable spins each truck 180 degrees. Time for seats. The vehicle turns and moves to different positions to put it in the optimal position for assembly. The rear seats go in first. Then, the front seats.
next, the truck gets its very first taste of power. I installed the battery and put the cover on every single one. If it comes through here during my shift, it's on me to put it in. The front grille goes on next. Then, using a white template to mark the spot, they press on more F-150 emblems. Each pickup passes by another digital scanner, which takes pictures of the entire truck, another part of the factory's quality control systems. They verify the exterior mirrors, logo, emblems, the exterior handles, all of our exterior features. From the body shop, to paint, to final assembly, new F-150s spend about 12 hours being built. And that includes the newest model of all, the Raptor. A street legal truck that tested the limits of flexibility at this ultimate factory. A new truck leaves final assembly. But if it's a Raptor, there's one more stop to make. A special station for steel plates to protect the bottom of the truck is a first for Ford. A factory built off-road racer. This really is the first time anyone's done a version of a truck that's meant to go off-road at highway type speeds up to 100 miles an hour and you know is engineered to literally fly through the air and land without breaking anything. The Raptor looks like a regular F-150 on steroids. The body is over 15 centimeters wider than a normal F-150, and it's around six centimeters taller, because the Raptor rides on a racing road suspension with huge 35-inch tires. spends a lot of time testing the Raptor at the Proving Grounds. First test, taking it through increasing depths of water. Up to 76 centimeters of water. We're going to do a water ingestion test on a uh, Raptor, current model Raptor vehicle. Uh, we'll be starting at four inches, working our way up to 30 inches. When you start getting into the six, eight, 10 inches at relatively fast speeds, and we're talking you know 20, 30 miles an hour, it is similar to hitting a brick wall. In the real world, water testing means crossing streams without any problems. The Raptor is a good example of how Ford can adapt and modify its assembly line at the Dearborn Truck Factory. Someone had a lot of vision when they built that plant because it's, it's a very flexible plant. When they looked at how wide our vehicle was, they were like, hold on, you know, you guys gotta, uh, you guys gotta rein it in a little bit. But even flexibility has its limits. If we would have gone 15 millimeters wider, that's less than an inch, we would have had to move, I mean, huge walls and masonry and, you know, retool all the conveyor belts. Those conveyor belts keep moving as new F-150s make their way down the final line in the factory. They're filled with coolant, oil, and fuel. This is where the truck is actually born at the end of our chassis line.
They're actually going through the final checks of the systems to make sure everything's OK with the vehicle before they start it. And then, of course, you want to shut the hood so you can see where you're going. Now, the truck undergoes some final checks under special lights. Exterior paint inspection. Looking for any defects, any flaws in the uh, exterior of the vehicle. Finally, a seemingly endless procession of new trucks heads out. 